Hi, my name is Jesse at Trash Panda, and I currently make fully recycled discs. As far as I can tell, I'm one of the only people who's making discs by hand, so I thought I'd take you through hand making a disc from start to finish. I get questions all the time about my process, how hard it is to hand make a disc, and how easy it would be for someone else to start up something like this. And well, there's a short answer and a long answer. The short answer, it's hard as hell and it takes a lot of time. The long answer, well, let's get into it. Okay, step one isn't just warming myself up. I've gotta warm up the machines too. It's currently 35 degrees out here, so at that temperature, I allow the injection machine and the mold 30 minutes to heat up. And while they heat up, I drink my coffee and dream about one day when I'll have a heated and well-ventilated shop. As that heats up, if you're unfamiliar with injection machines, here's a simple description of how they work. Basically, you have a barrel and a plunger. These two are actually within a hundredth of an inch, so they fit perfectly. You also need some type of heating element. This one slips perfectly right onto the barrel. The idea of an injection machine in its simplest form is that plastic goes in, is melted, and then pushed through into a mold. So after everything heats up, I'll add plastic, it'll melt, I'll attach the mold to the bottom of the barrel, and then I'll manually push the plastic through the barrel and into the disc mold. Simple. All right, while that's heating up, I can't stress this enough, you gotta be safe. We're talking about melted plastic that's 260 degrees Celsius and tiny plastic particles in the air. So I use welding gloves and a heavy duty respirator to make sure I'm safe the entire time. So the barrel is heating up, but the plunger is still freezing cold. So I'm gonna get that inside the barrel as soon as I can. That way it heats up as well. The other thing about the warm up stage is that there's a ton of time for practice coming. Okay, once we're ready to add the plastic, we measure out a shot size of 180 grams. Okay, once I put all the plastic in, I put the plunger back into the barrel so that all of the plastic is held inside, melting at 260 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna leave it there for 24 minutes. When I inject a bunch of times in a row, I can be working on some of the later steps at this point, but since this is the first one of the day, I guess I'll just do some more putting. Okay, this is the trickiest part, followed by the hardest part. Okay, once I've injected all the way, I have to hold it down for a minute.
Okay, this is by far the hardest part of the process. I now have to get the plunger out of the barrel while this cools. This is gonna cool for about 10 minutes, so I've got time, but it's basically a deadlift, some shoulder press, it's all the workouts. It's, it's hard. <laughs> things I absolutely want to improve is how much manual power it takes to inject on this machine. I think a winch, a hydraulic press, or even a threaded barrel with a motor could help with that. But if you have ideas, let me know in the comments below. Okay, once I've opened the mold, I let it cool for four more minutes. Then I use a knife Try it out and continue to let it cool for another 20 minutes. Okay, after it's completely cooled down comes one of the most important parts. And honestly, it's one of my favorite parts too, because I haven't told anybody about this yet. All of the information you need to know is on the bottom of the disc. Engraved into the mold is my website, a few important items, and handmade in Colorado. But now comes adding additional information. After cutting off the injection point, there's a little nub left over. And that's where I add the type of plastic that this is, so that if this disc is found in 10, 100, 500 years, it can be recycled. I use a coin from Precious Plastic because not only does it say the type of plastic that it is and they had them made already, but it also pays a little homage to the people who helped me start this whole thing. Additionally, there's a blank grams and a number blank. For both of those, I use these steel numbers and just hammer them in. The gram side is pretty obvious, but the number blank is because I'm gonna number every single disc. So you might end up with number 10, 101, or 2,342. Who knows? And with that, you have a finished disc. This video was edited down kind of like a cooking show, but the real time it takes once everything's heated up to make one single disc is 30 minutes. To be honest, it actually takes longer than that. And yes, the majority of that time is just waiting for the plastic to heat up or cool down. But if I'm making a bunch of discs in a row, I can work on some of the later steps for one disc while the plastic is melting for the next one. That means that stacked together, it averages out to about 30 minutes. So with one machine, I can make two discs per hour. With two machines, I could make four discs per hour. And with three machines, well, I don't have enough arms for that. Now, I know what you're immediately gonna ask. How the hell do you plan to scale something when the production rate is so slow? And that's a great question, but I'm not sure I'm the right person to ask it to. For now, making these discs is less of a business and more of a craft for me. Eventually, I'll work on scaling, better systems, and even better tooling. But I'll cross those bridges when I get there. But hey, since you've stuck around this long, I'll let you in on a little secret. One of my long-term goals is to have a super dope space with a ton of injection machines where you can come and make your own recycled disc. Wouldn't that be so rad? <laughs> Anyways, oh my gosh, I totally forgot the most important step. Once you finish making the disc, you have to go out and throw it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you next time.